dear guests, let us welcome on stage Mr. Martin Basila, founder and CEO of Sinsonio, Slovakia. Mr. Martin Basila. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I think it was an amazing presentation about the system in China. And I can imagine that we will apply the system on our political scene. But I'm afraid that half of the parliament will be empty afterwards. And I would like to also apply such a credit system on the citizens and companies with regards to how they behave to our nature, how they behave to our environment, and uh, how much waste do they produce, uh, how do they separate, how do we recycle, how many open dumps we have in the, our forest. I think this is a pretty intensive topic these days, and we see that Greta is traveling around the world, and as she's speaking about uh, better behaving when it comes to when it comes to our nature and our environment. My name is Martin Basila, I'm from Slovakia, and I'm a founder of Senzonia, a company, and uh, I got like 25 years plus uh, experience from automation, robotics, uh, and IT. And six years ago, uh, I decided to uh, develop a beer pub. I love beer, really. I don't like the Euro beer, I like the, like, the craft beer, and uh, even a lot of my friends, so I invest the money, and I developed the best beer pub in Slovakia, where you can always find 100 plus different types of beer and you can really enjoy the taste of Europe or all the world of the beer. What is good about the, about the beer pub is that uh, in IT industry, you became a god. Because every IT engineer here in uh, Central Europe is dreaming to get a hotel or to get a restaurant. I don't know why. It's a really shitty business. But everyone is dreaming about that to have a, have a restaurant. What is the advantage to having a beer pub is that uh, many interesting people is coming there and there is like a mid-class coming and I made a lot of relation in the beer pub. And six years ago, I met people from waste management, from waste industry, and I said, ah, it's a pretty boring topic. Uh, it's so simple, I just take my trash and I throw it out and that's it and then, then disappear and another day I will bring another trash and that's a very, very simple process. But now after five years, when I'm living only the waste story, and I, and I get more, more pictures in my phone of the bins than my children. I got three children, but there's so many pictures in my, in my phone of different bin types, different landfills, different uh, haulers and the collection vehicles. It's a really brilliant topic to learn, and it's a brilliant topic to a little bit distract. What I learned that uh, we are doing, or they are doing, the business of collection of the waste uh, like two, three hundred years the same way. They go from the point to point, and they collect every single bin on Tuesday. And then paper on Thursday. And on, on Friday, there's a plastic. Doesn't matter if it's full, doesn't matter if it's uh, half empty. It's 5 o'clock morning, and they are collecting the only glass bottle from the bin, and it's making brutal noise, and everyone is waking up. So I think there's a missing of data, because uh, if they know that the bin is empty, they didn't go there because it's like 14 euro to collect the bin for the glass collection. And it's like 25 euro, euro to collect the bin, which is underground or semi-underground. So it's also about the money. It's also about the pollution. It's uh, about the blocking of the streets. In London, you can't go with the hauler to the streets after 7 o'clock. Otherwise, the traffic jam is immediately generated. So there are many implications. How do you behave to the waste? Our company. Senzonio, uh, we created Global Waste Index, and we found out that the best country in OECD realm is uh, South Korea. Then there's a Japan. By the way, in a Japan, we don't have a place for our business because there are, no, there are no bins. There are just plastic bags. But the plastic bags are given in exact minute on the exact point on the street, and minute after, car is coming and is collecting the plastic bag. So the plastic bag is there just two minutes on the street. They are very precise, the Japanese. And therefore, it's, it's working. Otherwise, if it's here in Slovakia, the plastic bags are there for days. There are rats, there are insects, it's smelling. And uh, I think you have to be, as a nation, like uh, you have to educate yourself and you have to become uh, to the other level, like, like Japanese are. For example, in Belgium, they are collecting waste at the villages at the end of the village. When they go for shopping, they collect the waste and they bring the waste to the bins at the end of the village. And it's very different than in South Korea. Everything is 
also in the plastic bag uh, put next to the house, and they're also coming uh, on, on a very exact uh, time and manner. Here in Europe, we are living the, the story. It's a Tuesday, it's Friday, it's, uh, sometimes it's empty, sometimes it's full, sometimes it's smelling, uh, etc. And we getting better, and we're getting better also because of sensory solutions. So what do we do? First of all, we are helping cities, we are helping collection companies, we are helping industries and also the bin pro producers to understand what asset do they have in the, in the city. We are building the cities and there are more and more people are coming, but uh, the infrastructure of the waste is uh, 20, 30 years old and uh, even the system, how they distribute the infrastructure, is based on the processes and be uh, best practices like 30 years ago. But now with our system, you can digitalize your asset in the streets. You can hire 10 students, they can digitalize where you have the bins, what type of bins, or you can import all the data to our system. And we have uh, specific algorithms which will tell you where to place the bins, where to change the bin structure. You don't have to have small bins. You can place one underground bin, and you, just can, you can just decrease the collection frequency by, by half, and you can save up a lot of money. Or you can implement semi-underground bins, and you can free the parking lots for, for the cars. So you can do a lot of magic with your, with your infrastructure, but you have to have the data. You know where are there on the, digital, on the digital map. And with our digital map, you can even find out new places for your depots from where the vehicles are starting. Or you can find new places for the landfills or for the uh, or inception plans, for the, for the burning plants where you, where you burn, burn your waste. So it's perfect to have the data, and then you can do Oh, good decisions. Um, this is what we call um, that you have to manage your bin smarter. So we have for every bin we have a specific RFID tag, and with the RFID tag we can always say that this is a bin which belongs to you, and next collection date will be tomorrow. And by the way, you have to put there only the plastic, uh, the plastic waste. And if your bin is like uh, 50 meters away, or someone has stolen your bin, we immediately are telling. To you, we are telling to the city that, hey, the, the infrastructure uh, got changed. And we already found uh, many cases where the restaurants are stealing the bins to other restaurants uh, from other, other part of the city. And our system is uh, finding such, a, such, a, such a cases, and we are bringing uh, the, the order into, into the infrastructure. And uh, you as a city, you don't need to pay for something which is uh, not uh, necessary. Um, with our, with our uh, algorithms, we even can tell you how uh, costly is every bin. How far is it from the depot? How far is it from the landfill? And based on this data, you can, you can decide that uh, you rather put uh, more capacity on the specific locations because it's too far and you rather decrease the collection frequency by half. Or you implement smaller cars to collect uh, specific, specific bins. So there's many things which you can understand uh, from the data uh, about the waste. Everyone, everyone wants to know how the people behave in the city. And you can really see in different cities that Southern part is recycling perfectly, or separating, not recycling, separating perfectly the waste, but the northern part is still very poor in recycling. And with our solution, because we are measuring how much waste do they produce in specific bins with our sensors, you can see that in this specific address, they produce too much general waste, and the recyclables are too low, but at the other places, it's much better. We are not we are not uh, telling that you should punish these people. We are telling you should educate the people, that they, that they became uh, really good waste separators. And the best uh, attitude how to teach and educate your citizens is through children. We are working with many universities, and there are programs that uh, it's best to go and educate in the kindergarten the small kids. And you tell them that plastic goes to yellow, paper goes to uh, blue bin. And then when the kid is coming home and is seeing that his father, brother, grandfather, grandmother is putting the plastic bottle into black bin, it's screaming and it's saying, hey, it's not, this is not like this. My teachers told me that it should, it should go to, to the yellow. So we believe that the education is, uh, is, the, is the key and uh, it will take a couple of generations, a couple of countries to really become on the level of Japanese or, or Germans. But uh, this, is the, this is the perfect way. But without the data, you can't do it because you don't know where is your city behaving and how. Um, 
So with our solution, you get the digital map, you know how much is produced, what type of waste, in what very specific uh, location. And based on that, you can do, you can do uh, different uh, actions. Uh, many places in the cities are blocked by waste bins. And uh, if you see that there are 10 black bins for general waste, then you can see in many cities that they disappeared and they get replaced by the semi-underground bins which are placed under the ground on the grass field and the place uh, which left after these bins became a parking lot. So it's uh, not only about the better efficiency, better uh, environment behavior, uh, decreasing of the pollution, but it's also saving a lot of spaces in the cities. Other thing is that we are now seeing in the cities that they don't have enough people to collect the waste. City of Prague, city of Vienna, just the very near cities, they get a big problem to collect the waste. There is such a low unemployment that the people are rather working in Amazon or in other, other uh, plants than to go and collect uh, in the freezing winter the bins and bring them to the, to the collection car. So this is a big problem and therefore it's really good to know where to go to collect the waste and where not to go. Or how to set perfectly your infrastructure because you have limited resources, not because of money. There is a lot of money. Vienna got 300 million euro a year for waste collection. Bratislava got uh, 25 million euro for the waste collection. So there is plenty of money, but there is less and less people who are wanting to work in this specific field. With our solution, what we do, we have a sensors. We can install the sensors in, in, inside the bins, and we are measuring level how much is the waste uh, of a level uh, in, the, in the bins, and based on that, we are optimizing the collection routes, and we are optimizing the, the cars which are needed to be uh, used for collecting the waste uh, in your city. So you go only when it's necessary, when it's necessary with limited uh, resources which are relevant to uh, be used for collecting of the, of the waste. We are not blocking uh, streets where it's not necessary, we are not producing pollution, so it's very efficient and it's pretty healthy for your citizens. They are getting super service for what they pay for, because they pay quite a lot of money and they need a good service. Service for citizens, waste is one of the major services. You can look at the Google and see the Italian cases where the elections are won or not because of the waste. If you are not able to manage the waste collection in your city, you are done. If there is some parking place blocked or if some lamp is not uh, lighting, you can accept it. But if there is no waste collected, you lost. So the waste is very, very sensitive and you can really, you can really uh, smell it, you can feel it if there is a problem with the, with the waste collection. When it comes to smart waste level, as I said, we are measuring how much is in the waste. We are measuring temperature, so we can even tell you where it's freezing, where it's not freezing. So based on that, you can, you can apply the salt on the roads when it's a winter, winter season. We tell you if there is a fire. The fire is a pretty big problem when you collect uh, electronic waste. So we are monitoring um, in many countries electronic waste. And one of the major problems is that the electronic waste, when it's got burned, it's uh, producing so much toxins, so you would like to be immediately notified that there is a problem, and our sensors are sending immediate uh, notification, and you can, you can even integrate it with a, a fire rescue system so they can come as soon as it's possible. So even this information is uh, very relevant. We can recognize if there was a collection, because many, many countries, like in Sofia, Bulgaria, I don't know if someone is from Bulgaria, uh, they are cheating a lot, so they are pretending that they are collecting the waste, but they are not. So you have, to ha you have to have a proof of service that you really did what was paid for, because there is so many complaints of people that uh, the bin is full, and then they have to smash the waste uh, next to the bin, that you rather have a solution to prove the service, that the service uh, was done. We said that the data is the power. Without data, you can do uh, good decisions, and I think the enter, uh, enter day is about the data and how to, uh, how to work with the data. We are producing a lot of data as IoT, as an Internet of Things, and that's uh, also big uh, or biggest risk to have uh, so much data because we are measuring six times a day from the bin. You have, in Bratislava, 50,000 bins. In Vienna, you have 300,000 bins, and you gain it by six, so you got millions of data a day, so you have to be really sure that you have perfect explanation of the data to the specific department and they, they know how to behave. 
because they can't open another analyst department who will analyze millions of data from the bins, another from the lamps, and from the, from the parking lots. You really have to know how to work with the data, and what they want, they have like an executive dashboard to be able to do the action very efficiently, and that you are spinning up the process, not slowing down. So we say that the good decisions are not possible without good, good data and trustable, trustable data. The sensors we do, we have different types of sensors. For small bins, like yesterday, we installed uh, the sensors to the Dubai Mall, that is the biggest mall in the Emirates. So we are monitoring the Dubai Mall, uh, small, beautiful bins in the mall, because they don't care about money. They care about cleanness, because they know that people are spending so much thousands of euros on USDs to buy in the shops, and they would like to have a very clean environment. So that's another stakeholder. So it's cleanness is, uh, is a different motivation why to have a smart waste uh, management. And therefore, we are also small monitors for small premises. Airports are using our solutions. Or the shredding companies, the, or the banks. Banks are collecting paper in the, in the shredding bins. But on every paper, there are very sensitive data. And it's not about the efficiency of the collection. It's about that, that if the bin is like 70% full, someone can put a hand and can take the paper from the bin. And this is a security leak. I know the blockchain will solve it because there is no paper. But today, this is a really, really big motivation to have monitored bins in the banks because of the security leak, not because of efficiency, not because of cleanness. That's another point of view uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you think about the smart Waste management. So different type of bins can be uh, and are uh, assembled by, by our solution. And our solution has uh, excellent data. We are buying data from TomTom, from uh, here. Uh, we are using Sidejig as the best optimization platform. So we are always finding the best way how to do the route planning. So we are taking only the cheapest car. We are taking the shortest route to do the job. And we're saving. 20, 30, 40 percent of direct cost for the for the waste collection, and I told you the sums. It's uh, really brutal numbers which you are, we are paying for the for the waste uh, in the cities. We are incorporating citizens uh, in the game. They, hash, they they are informed because they have a mobile applications and they know that that bin on the right side is empty. And if I get a bunch of paper from IKEA, I rather go there because it's empty. No one is has such a mental strength to bring the paper back home. So it's rather known to where to go, and there, there's a space for paper. And other thing is that they can report. They can say, hey, there is a smell, or it's inaccessible, or it's broken, or it's missing. So this is something what they can do. They can also ask, OK, what should I put into this bin? And we tell them. Now we, we can also recognize with the AI what is the bin, and we can tell you, OK, this is for plastic, and you should put in this specific city this and this type of waste uh, uh, into it. So the citizen, they have, to be, they have to be part of the game, and this is what we do with our mobile applications. We are in Prague, so we're monitoring enter Prague when it comes to uh, underground bins. Uh, there was an announcement a week ago that also there's a new application for citizens. They can be involved in the game. We are monitoring all the recycling centers uh, uh, in, in Dubai. They, they, uh, they separate 17 different, 17 different commodities. One of the, one of the uh, bin is for mobile phones. It's from opposite side. It's full of mobile phones, by the way. If you want some mobile phone, you go there. You will find it. And you can find some maybe also well working. And by the way, it's, it's so clean. It's so clean, the, these recyclable centers, that they got a birthday party at the recyclable center. It was my very first experience that I came to install the sensors uh, with our engineers. And there was a birthday uh, party on the, on the, the bench. Of the, of the recycling center. So it's becoming like a part of their life. It's a very good uh, advertisement over there. Everything is uh, like a zero power. There are solar panels, uh, there are education panels uh, and education screens. It's really, really nice concept. There. I'm, I'm very proud to be part of, uh, part of the solution. Um, Senso Neo, definitely we are not full solution for sustainability of the cities, but we are at this small part of the, of the puzzle. And that what I love about Senso Neo is it's well balanced, the green, and by the way, very good business. So this is what I was always, always dreaming about, to have uh, like life balance. Otherwise, I'm working in, at some corporation, but to be part of Senso Neo, it's, uh, 
it's fulfilling of my dream. We are here from Slovakia. We are in uh, Taiwan. We are in Australia. We are in Montreal, Canada, um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and here in Slovakia. So that's, uh, that's the subsidiary and the headquarter. We are on the market uh, five years. These are the major major markets. Luckily, we are finally in Africa. So we are in Niger and. Uh, and South Africa from last month. It was another dream uh, which I was targeting to. So we are in all uh, continents. Um, come on. The customers are different, I told you. Banks, collection companies, industries, cities, uh, haulers. So there are different, different usages. And even some of you will find a new application of our solution. For example, we are, we are monitoring water in the wells. We are monitoring uh, wastewater in the septics for some friends because they, they somehow convinced us. And uh, we won a lot of awards and recognition uh, around, the, around the world. Um, last time, it was in Paris uh, at the Facility Management Expo. So we are pretty, pretty well recognized in the market. We are a member of uh, global alliances. We are very, very happy for all the partnerships we have uh, around, the, around the globe. And they are helping us to distribute and sell our solution uh, in, in their specific countries. This is Senzonio. Thank you very much. I will be here for a while. I'm so happy to tell you about the smart waste management because I really love the topic. Thank you very much.